Welcome to Lecture 5 on the cereal industry. This is part 3 where we look at the industry of barley. This subject is part of the agricultural degree offered at North Melbourne Institute of TAFE, which is an education institution based in Australia. Please visit our website for any details on this subject, other courses and educational products that we offer at www.nmit.edu. .au. My name is Dr Nikki Cooley. To complete Lecture 5 you will need to watch the other lectures on wheat, rice, rye and sorghum. Hordium valgarium or barley is one of the oldest cultivar crops in the world. It was domesticated in the Fertile Crescent region about 10,000 years ago. The Egyptians, the Greeks and the Roman civilizations all use barley in making breads, porridges and soup. Barley has been used to make beer for 6,000 years. It was its tolerance to frost, drought and salinity which assisted in the early do domestication of barley. In the past barley has been used as currency. It has many functions as food, as malting and as livestock feed. Barley does not have a gl enough gluten to produce rising bread. The varieties grown for, mal for malting have been selected for grain chemical characteristics which include amylase activity and for low grain protein. About one third of all the barley grown is for the bar brewing industry. There are a number of steps for the manufacture of beer. These include malt preparation, where the dried grain is moistened and germinated. Within the germinating grains, enzymes convert the starch to sugars. Malt is a short term t shortened term for maltose sugar that is produced. The germinated grain is then roasted and crushed to produce malt powder. It is malt powder that is the substrate for fermentation or malt powder can be used to make such products as malted milk balls and malted milkshakes. Second is mash production. The malt powder is then mixed with the starch or other grains such as rice, wheat or corn. The malt enzymes then convert all these starches to sugars. After the conversion is completed, the mixture is filtered and the liquid called the wort is saved. A third stage is mixing and brewing. The wort is then mixed with hops or other flavouring ingredients and then cooked or brewed. Hops add flavour to beer and help retain the foamy head of beer longer. This is followed by fermentation. The cooked wort is cooled and yeast is added. The yeast converts sugar to ethanol and carbon dioxide. Different types of yeast produce beer with char distinct characteristics. Bottom fermenting yeast produce lagers whereas top fermenting yeast produce ales. This is followed by aging. This is when the beer is left for several weeks, often in beechwood chips to provide fla flavouring. During aging, additional fermentation and natural carbonation can be stimulated by adding a small amount of water and yeast. The final stage of manufacture of beer is filtering, pasteurising and carbonation. These are the steps before packaging and allows removal of impurities or microorganisms. The alcoholic content of beer ranges from 5% <clears throat> through to about 12% and with low alcohol beers can range from anything below 5%. There are different types of beers. These include ale, which is a special top fermenting yeast. It is also only barley malt. Lager, these are beers with predominant types um, across the world. They are produced with by bottom fermenting yeast and from the starch from barley, corn and rice. Light beer have fewer calories than normal beer and is produced over a longer period of sugar fermentation. This allows the calories to be reduced but also reduces the alcohol content. And Pilsner is a lager beer brewed with a strong hop component. Barley is a winter grain. It is a grass that has a crown which develops multiple tillers. 
Its flowering inflorescence is a cylindrical spike with spikelets in either two or six rows. The lemna and pelea or hull are fused to the seed. The lemna has a long awn. The seed coating is removed for human consumption and this process is called purling. Barling was cultivated from wild barley which ranges from North Africa and Crete in the west to Tibet in the east. So if you've made the choice to put barley in your rotations, which variety will you grow? Usually the decision by farmers is made between a malting or a feed variety. And this will depend on a number of factors. There are the malt versus feed grade payments. These are related to yield differences. Malt barley tends to yield lower but pays higher, although you do have to manage for, for high quality. The probability of producing a malting grade barley is then lower, it becomes more risky. The availability of malting storage segregations and storage facilities is also another consideration, as is disease resistance and agronomic considerations such as your soil type and your climatic conditions. For long-term planning, it is worth considering malt in a grazing rotation. If you are considering malt as a new component of your rotation, it is worthwhile contacting grain marketers to discuss market demand before you sow. The following table produced by DPI Victoria is a summary of the most popular barley varieties that are grown in Australia. You will see that there are two main categories, malting and feed barley. Of this they have different heights, maturity, head loss, pump grain rating and loading. Please take some time to review these varieties and become familiar with the different aspects. What makes a good malting barley versus a good feed barley? This guide is produced by DPI Victoria and illustrates for Victorian regions the time of sowing for barley. This will give you an indication of when to sow and how long the season is. As you can see, this does change slightly depending on your location. It will also depend on the climatic inputs for that season and your variety interactions. When you come to harvest barley, you need to consider the grain quality. Harvest operation is essential also for yield determination. If you are growing malting barley, a germination percentage of 98% or more is required to sa for sale to most molsters. Harvest must consider grain viability, and this is why the moisture content is so important. You need to also consider skinning in the grain over threshing, storing wet due to the high harvest grain moisture, without aeration or drying to temperatures above 40, 43 degrees C. Either wet, without air, or temperatures above 43 degrees C will significantly reduce the germination. Harvest determined by grain moisture content that is suitable for storage. Direct heading of dry barley is one harvest method. It relies upon grain ripened and dried to 12% and that allows delivery to the receival point without any drying or aeration. If there is a harvest delay this will result in a loss in crop and quality possibly due to weathering or wind damage. Prevent the skinning and the cracking of the grain by correct halving settings on the machine. Avoid contamination by good hygiene practices and this is a rule of thumb you should apply to all crops. Monitor crops throughout the day. You may have to adjust the thresher speeds or concave to suit conditions. Use the correct screens to remove small grain. Correct setup of the header is very important to, sure, to ensure that the over threshing of the barley grain does not occur. To reduce harvesting delays, direct harvesting and a moisture content above 12% can be considered, but if this is undertaken you will need to place under aeration to maintain quality or pass through a grain dryer to reduce its moisture content to a level that can be safely stored and allow further future germination. 
Malting barley can be harvested once the grain has reached physiological maturity. This is defined as dough stage and when the moisture content is no more than 18%. Harvesting at a moisture level above this is limited by the ability of most harvesters to successfully thresh grain from the head. Considering aeration or drying costs, the practicalities, the best moisture content at harvest for malting barley is around 14-15%. to 15%. If moist grain cannot be effectively handled, harvest at a moisture content of less than 12.5% is recommended. The colour of the grain is another grain quality attributes that needs to be considered. International bars of both malting and feed barley prefer barley that is bright and free of mould or weather staining. Discoloured grain will be an indicator of high level of fungal activity. The causes of grain colour quality loss include climate, particularly under humid and hot conditions, and the presence of any disease, mould or fungi. High humidity in the late stage of grain development, from dough to harvest, can lead to grain weathering. Even heavy dews can also cause this during this period. There is a strong correlation between the relative humidity at 3 p.m and the risk of harvesting grain with low grain brightness. There are a couple of practices that can be undertaken in order to manage for proper grain colour. Any practice that increases the level of screening is likely to increase the grain brightness, but this is costly. The most common management technique used is to match the variety to the optimal sowing date. If you sow too early you will increase the risk of damaging rains during grain filling However, if you sow too late, you will increase the level of screenings. It, it seems that the application of fungicides does not appear to affect grain brightness. The practice of swathing or wind rowing may also be used to quickly mature the crop and reduce the time that it is exposed to damaging weather. Grain size is another payment component to the industry and reflects its importance. The larger the grain, the more malt extract that can be obtained. This is important because the higher the levels of the malt extract, the higher the alcohol content that results. Small part grains pass through sieves and they are not used in the brewing process and are therefore a waste. Uniform grain size is also important for the milling process in the brewery. There are predominantly three factors which affect grain size. The climatic inputs of temperature and moisture particularly the quantity and the timing of both of these parameters. For example, the grain filling period of barley in Western Australia can be associated with dry springs and brief hot spells. The amount and the timing of this moisture supply during grain filling and high temperatures after flowering can affect the grain size. <clears throat> variety also shows an effect as there is quite a range of average grain size depending on the variety. There can be up to a 2 mg fresh weight difference between some grain varieties. Other considerations that also need to be looked at for grain size are sow timing. You need to get this right. If it's too early, you won't ha you'll have the risk of um, wind damage and therefore you won't obtain the optimal size. Disease control is another important component to get right. Sowing barley into a legume st uh, stubbles can contribute to lower grain weight and higher screenings. You have to watch for certain disease, particularly rhizocotonia and nematodes. Foliar diseases can also result in a reduced grain size as they reduce the carbon carbohydrate fixation capabilities of the plant. The oversupply of nitrogen from the soil and plant residues to form fer uh, fertiliser, which increases grain protein to unacceptable levels. It is likely to increase the level of screenings. For malting barley, it is critical to match the variety and its grain shape with the management and the environment in which it's being grown. Despite having a similarly mature length, the variety Bowden can be grown in wider range of situations than gar gardenia barley, for example, because its grains are generally rounder than those of gardenia, 
As a consequence, Borden has a higher probability of its screening levels at harvest being below the malting barley limit of 20% than those of the gardener barley. Grain protein concentration is another quality parameter that just has to be got just right. The grain protein directly relates to the level of malt extract in the grain. <clears throat> this affects operating efficiency of the malt house and brewery. If the protein content is too high, then there is a low level of malt extract resulting in low alcohol, an undesirable trait. However, if too low a protein content is found, the stability of the beer head and the cling of the beer foam to the side of the glass results. This is also a negative attribute. Low protein also limits the yeast growth during fermentation, constricting alcohol levels. Grain protein can be managed in your crop by two major inputs, nitrogen and water. Nitrogen forms red of residues which are available throughout the growing season and the plant moves the nitrogen from the soil into the grain. The amount of nitrogen available is a consequence of the fertiliser application, the crop rotation and the, carbon, the soil carbon level. A delay in sowing, applying nitrogen fertiliser and adjusting seeding rates may also influ influence grain protein through changes in crop biomass and, get and grain yield. Varieties can also differ in their ability to transfer nitrogen and take it into the straw to their grain during grain filling. The following is a set of recommendations for the management of barley. Sow after root disease break. You, barley can be sown after wheat where root disease or seed contamination is not a limitation. Optimal sowing dates maximize, maximize yields. Think carefully about when you should sow and when the, the harvest is likely to be at grain stage. Avoid sowing after legumes. If post two years pasture growth has resulted, a high yielding dwarf feed variety is recommended. It is advisable to avoid cells, soils with more than 3% levels of carbon. Also avoid waterlogged paddocks and paddocks that are very low in nitrogen. Apply nitrogen fertilizer around seedling prior to the end of tillering. High yielding varieties are the recommendation for improving yield due to the nitrogen dynamics that are required in this management system. On Moodle you will find a documentation called Barley Nutrition. This is produced by the DFA in WA. To complete your notes in this topic, please detail the nutrient requirements for barley. Produce a table or diagram representing this information that you can le later learn for examination. The following <coughs> in the table has been produced by AGRIC in WA. It shows grain yield, grain protein and screenings comparing two barley varieties. You can see that different varieties result in different um, grain yields, protein content and screenings and that these are very dependent on the total nitrogen applied. In this experiment nitrogen application varied from 20 kilograms of nitrogen per hectare up to 140. I'd like you to think about our wheat experiment and the concentration that we applied with our urea. Do you think you could make any observations on barley crop based on what we found with wheat? We'll have a discussion about this in one of the tutorials slash practical days. The table on the slide shows results from long-term predicted barley yields from 2008-2012. The numbers in brackets indicate the number of sites in that area. You will see that the yield varies depending on the location where the barley is grown. Mali, North Central, North East, South West and Wirima areas were all compared. Different malting varieties and brewing varieties were compared. So this brings us to a close on Lecture 5, Part 3, on the topic of barley. In summary, you should now have an understanding of the background of barley and a description of this crop. 
You should understand the importance of the in industry requirements, as there are large variations. The quality of the grain differs dramatically, whether you are growing barley grain for fodder feed or for the brewing industry. If you are growing barley for the brewing industry, you must be very aware of the quality requirements for this industry. Low grain moisture, good colour and high protein and a moderate protein concentrations. In order to obtain all of these quality attributes, you must look very carefully at your management inputs. This includes the climatic inputs of moisture and temperature. What are they likely to be at the time of maturation? If you wish to increase your yield, look closely at your variety. Examine your nitrogen. Ensure that you don't grow your crop on too low or too high nitrogen levels. And also ensure you understand where barley fits best into your crop rotations. This is the end of this lecture.